about punching a time clock and working nine to five. We're talking about working around the clock, rain or shine, hot or cold, because crops and animals won't wait. Jimmy knows all about it because he lives it. And Jimmy knows what you're going through because he goes through it too. He's here to talk about it. It's seed and feed, chemicals and compost, vaccinations and irrigation. It's time for Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. Hey, good day to all you great stewards of the land. It is the day in ag brought to you by the First National Bank and Trust of Elk City in Sayre, Oklahoma. Happy Friday, everybody. Uh, Briley will not be in here today. Uh, she had a school project going on that was way more important than my show, which is fine. That's the way I want it to be. But she'll be back next Friday. And by the way, if you are attending the uh, field day at my farm, Tuesday at the High Tunnel, she'll be there. There's going to be some uh, FFA Act teachers and students there. All kinds of people going to be there. And today is the last day that you can register to uh, RSVP uh, to uh, come to the uh, event out there at my High Tunnel. It's going to be fun. It's going to be 78 degrees. How about that? perfect for the high tunnel because it can get hot in there i'm telling you so anyway if you want to register uh just call over to the nrcs office at sarah oklahoma and uh talk to cassandra and uh or whoever answers the phone tell them you want to put your name down for the list uh the more the merrier i think there's 40 something going to be there already so it's going to be fun uh i'm going to be giving you insights on uh what i've learned with the high tunnel and the uh focus farms are going to be there also uh he's the manufacturer and the builder of the high tunnels and nrcs and the uh north fork of well the uh oklahoma uh conservation commission is going to be there so answering any questions on uh programs for the high tunnels you don't have to get a big tunnel like I did. They they make smaller ones, I promise you. So, anyway, it'll be a fun day. Uh, also, what else is going on? Uh, uh, just a lot of things are going on, I guess, next week. Uh, Monday, uh, McIntyre Ranch will be in here to talk about their sale. And then, next, and then I'll be doing my show from the high tunnel also. Tuesday, so I'll be doing the show out in the field, and then we got uh, something else going on next week. Oh, the 27th, yes, at the Beckham County uh, Fair Barn or the County Barn, uh, they're going to do be doing some peanut blasting. So that is, I think that's from 9:30 to 11, uh, the 27th. I think that's next Friday. So anyway, got all kinds of crazy things going on this fall. Did you guys see the forecast? Woo! Son, if if they're right, Western Oklahoma, it can get up to, uh, uh, let me see, where is that at? I got it right here. A lot of Western Oklahoma can get anywhere from three quarters to an inch and a half. The Panhandle, Texas and Oklahoma and a lot of Kansas, maybe up to two inches of rain over the next three days starting uh, today. They, I got a half inch. There at Merritt Road in 152 last night on some grass. Not any uh, wheat ground in there. But anyway, there was a pretty good shower come through there. And it didn't even settle the dust at my house. So you just, they said you're just going to have to be under these clouds. It's one of those deals. Hopefully we can get a storm in here that we don't have to be under. We all will be under, which will be a good deal. Let's check out some temperatures real quick. 92 degrees at Hollis, Altus, and Mangum. 93 and walters is 96 that's the warmest spot in the state and there's a cool spot going on cheyenne home of the secret weapon is 83 degrees but camargo's 96 degrees so just uh i guess some clouds going on in there i don't know i haven't looked outside lately arnett's 95 slap outs 95 89 at the may ranch and out here in the panhandle 95 at lipscomb 96 canadian 92 at dozer wellington you're 92 uh childress 93 and odell's 94 i went by the sale barn yesterday going south on six highway and they were lined up 
with cattle trailers there. It was, I've seen them lined up all the way back to the interstate, but that just caught me off guard. They was I don't know how many trailers and trucks was in there, but there was a lot. So they're probably having a pretty good sale right now at the Elk City uh, Livestock Auction. So uh, probably unless they had a big run of cows like they did last week, finishing up here pretty quick and then get over to the uh, calves and the feeders going on. So anyway, I guess they're going to have a big sale out there today. I will go out and see Kay here in just a little bit to see what she does to me so I can talk to, bad about her again next Tuesday. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see how it's going on. So anyway, let's see what happened overnight in our big world of agriculture. Soybean and wheat futures were modestly higher in overnight trading while corn was little changed and amid adverse weather in growing areas across the globe. Rainfall is expected this weekend from the central high plains east to the mid-Mississippi Valley, according to the National Weather Service's Weather Prediction Center in a report this morning. That may slow down, uh, slow dry down, and the harvest in some areas where rain will be strong enough to keep farmers out of their fields. 9% of the corn crop was in the bin as of Sunday, and that's up from the five-year average of 6% according to the USDA. In Brazil, soybean planting has started, but elevated temperatures and low humidity has hindered producers in the South American country, according to the report from AgRural. Australian wheat may see dry conditions through Monday, but rainfall is expected to return next week in the eastern and southern growing areas, according to a meteorologist from Maxar. In the Canadian prairies meanwhile rainfall through sunday likely will slow dry down for wheat but drier weather next week will allow the harvest to accelerate soybean futures overnight for november delivery rose three cents to 10 16 and a quarter a bushel overnight and on the chicago board of trade soy meal added 220 to 323.80 a short ton and soy oil was down 0.05 0.05 cents to 40.88 cents a pound. Wheat futures for December delivery gained five and a quarter cents to 570 and three quarter a bushel. And Kansas City futures added four and a half to 569 a bushel. Corn futures fell a tick to 405 and a half a bushel. Let's see how exports did this week. Export sales of corn and soybeans jumped in the seven days that ended on September 12th, according to data from the USDA. Corn sales for delivery in the 24-25 marketing year started on September 1st, totaled 847,000 metric tons. That's up from 666,000 a week earlier. Mexico was the biggest buyer at 280,000 tons followed by John Doe country at 183,000, Japan at 121,000, Spain 71,000, and Colombia even purchased 67,000. Exports of corn for the week came in at 572,000 tons. Soybean sales jumped to 1.75 million metric tons, up from 1.47 million a week earlier. China bought 973,000 tons, Mexico 166,000, a John Doe destination took 101,000, and Vietnam purchased 97,700 tons. The total would have been higher, but Argentina canceled orders of 88,000 tons. Bean exports for the week were at 446,000 tons, according to the USDA. Wheat sales also fell week to week, dropping 48% to 246,000 metric tons. That's also down 46% from the prior four-week average. Mexico, again, the big buyer at 59,000. Philippines, 57,000. Thailand, 51. Vietnam, 33,000. And Haiti was in there for 31,000. A John Doe importer nicks cargoes of 29,500. Wheat exports for the week jumped to 642,000 tons. That's the highest since the marketing year started on June 1st, and an 18% increase from the previous week. 
Let's see here. Weather in our agricultural world here in the United States. Extreme heat is expected today in eastern Oklahoma and western Arkansas, according to the National Weather Service. Heat heat indexes are going to be around 107. I think I read where the uh, Oklahoma Mesonet said yesterday was the second hottest September 19th on record. Uh, so anyway, uh, storms may again develop this afternoon. These storms will should be less numerous with a minimal risk of severe weather. Other storms expected are in eastern Nebraska and western Iowa late tonight. So anyway, we'll see what's all going on with that. Well, today is the Wheeler General Store happy day, happy hour. So you guys, tomorrow... Let's see here. Make sure 9 o'clock, goat tying starts. And I think, because uh, i got to tell you this. There we go. Yes. Tomorrow is their customer appreciation uh, day at the Wheeler General Store. And it will be from 11 to 1 o'clock. Barbecue meal and goat rope. Uh, yes, goat roping starts at. 9 a.m. Not goat tying, but goat rope. <laughs> but are you looking for deer corn? The Wheeler General Store is fully stocked with corn, attractants, game cameras, feeders, and much, much more. While you're looking for hunting accessories, be sure to check out all their different meat seasonings, Elk Creek, Meat Church, and Traeger, just to name a few of them. Feed season is right around the corner. The Wheeler General Store has been a high-pro dealer for 10 years. They deliver feed to ranches and stores all over the Texas Panhandle, Oklahoma, Kansas, and yes, New Mexico. For prices, contact Nathan Hefley at 806-826-5531. The Wheeler General Store is located at 15868 Highway 152, just outside of Wheeler, Texas. As always, they look forward to serving you. Let's go ahead and take a Wheeler General Store break when I come back. We'll do the Lipscomb dealerships ag grain market update. Be right back after this. The day in ag with Jimmy Clark. Hey, farmers and ranchers, it's time to make your life easier with an easy haul hay trailer from Everett's Welding in Visay, Oklahoma. These trailers are designed to haul multiple hay bales as quickly and efficiently as possible, keeping more money in your pocket. It'll pay for itself over time and make your life easier. What a deal. See all they have to offer at everettwelding.com. Be sure and check out their ads in the Penny News. Anything you can get out and about and do in, in the public to keep yourself out there, seeing what's going on and you're knowledgeable about what's going on and you have customers come in wanting to do something open a business or whatnot it might be nice to have a little insight on your side they have business plans it's probably rare to find a business plan that has every little in and out thought out so if you know what's going on around town there may be something you could share with them that might either alter their plan make their plan a different direction speed it up slow it down i'm utah robinson and i help make the difference first national bank and trust of elk city and sayer member fdic your cattle need feed they've got to eat so you need a reliable source of feed that won't break the bank. Kirk Feeds and Eric offers competitive prices on bulk feed at the store and delivered to your place. We also carry fence wire, T-posts, gates, water tanks, and a lot more farm and ranch supplies. We get new products every week, so check back often to see if we have something else you need. We even have the sportsman covered for all your hunting needs. Farming and ranching is in our blood, and we want to help keep agriculture strong. Kirk Feeds, 117 West 2nd Street in Erie. We do get travelers going through that have AC that doesn't work. You're running down the interstate, and it's 105 degrees outside, and it can be that hot, if not hotter, inside. Lots of times during the winter, you can come up with a leak in your system. So it is very important to make sure that that stuff is correctly maintained. Getting it checked out, do your general maintenance is better than wait until it's broke to fix it. Napa Auto Parts of Elk City, 716 West 3rd. We try our best not to tell the customer no, but to find what they need. Do you love the great outdoors? Maybe you enjoy trap shooting or skeet shooting, or maybe getting some target practice in at the firing range is your thing. If you're that person, you love guns. 
Hobart Farm and Garden has a whole room dedicated to guns, gun safes, ammunition, and more. It's quite impressive. You gotta go check it out. They are Western Oklahoma's Platinum Browning Dealer and Glock Stocking Dealer. They're located at 1030 South Monroe in Hobart, Oklahoma. If they don't have it, you don't need it. Hobart Farm and Garden. It's important to keep your irrigation machines up and running during the growing season because when your crops need water, they can't wait. And when you need parts, there's no substitute for the best. Valley Genuine Parts, from gaskets and gearboxes to booster pumps and boom bags, Valley Genuine Parts make all the difference to your operation. Contact your local Valley dealer, Knutson Irrigation, 1-800-373-9325 for all your irrigation parts, technology, and service needs or online at KnutsonIrrigation.com. The second annual McIntyre Red Angus Fall event is Monday, October 7th at 1 p.m. at Sweetwater, featuring 42 registered age advantage bulls, also an elite group of 17 registered heifers and over 100 bred commercial heifers. View the sale online at cci.live. For sale info, go to McIntyreRedAngus.com. A lot of great cattle is for sale near Sweetwater the first Monday in October. The second annual McIntyre Red Angus Fall event is Monday, October 7th at 1 p.m. at Sweetwater. He loves to talk about farming and ranching. Here's more of Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. Canadian Texas, here you are. Here's your ag weather update. 95 degrees, heat index of 94, humidity at 27 Dew point 56. The winds are out of the southwest at 14 miles an hour. Wind gust at 17. Peak wind gust today, 21 miles an hour. Uh, no rain so far this month. A Canadian, uh, no red flag or sub freezing minutes. Eight inch soil temperature, 85 degrees. Hey, I got one coupon left. And hey, by the way, these uh, coupons expired. 12 3 of 24 so you have until december the 3rd to use these coupons up anyway i got one more for 66 to go for a free burger fries and drinks combo meal i got so here's your question you guys ready it's gonna be a little different today which is always different if i ask it anyway uh so one of my favorite spiders is the wolf spider and it's probably one of the more common spiders out on the farm, in the garden, in the garage, in the shop, whatever. And sometimes in the house, like my house. Anyway, uh, so you know when you get a big old mama wolf spider and either bump her or do something and all those little babies crawl off of her, which is kind of eerie deal to watch, but the wolf spiders are very, very good. They, they catch all kinds of crazy insects. So... My question is for one coupon for a free combo meal at 66 to go out here west of Elk City is your best guess how many babies are on their back. Is it hundreds? Thousands? Because <laughs> it looks like it when it happens. But anyway, so whoever, I kind of got a really good estimate. Not that I counted them, but I did a little research on it. But anyway, so... Uh, whoever texts in to our ag text line at 580-225-9697 with their best guess, I'm gonna I'll, I'll, I'm gonna be the judge uh, of how many spiders babies are on a mama wolf spider, and so I'm I'm judging it. There won't be no favoritism, but text in your name too, please, with your answer so I know who wins. So anyway, that's your question: How many babies are on a mama wolf spider when you accidentally flip them or something and those little things just go boom everywhere so all right let's see what the let's check out the markets want to uh where is it right there it is all right let's see what's going on now it doesn't look as good as it did earlier this morning but it, it looks okay uh december corn 402 down three and three quarters march 420 down four and a quarter soybeans for november 10 10 down two and a half january 10 28 down two and three quarters soybean mill for october 315 50 down 440 december 317 40 down 420 i wish i'd have cleaned my glasses for my show i got a lot of smear smudges going on with this computer between me and the glasses uh october soybeans oil sorry october soybean oil 
Forty-one ninety-nine up twenty-four. December forty-one twenty-four up thirty-one. Hard red winter wheat. December five sixty-two up or no down. Sorry, down two and a half. March is five seventy-five down two and three quarters, and it was up this morning. Let's see. Nobody wants to listen about the cotton prices, and I don't blame them. Oil out of West Texas, October seventy-two thirty-five up forty. Natural gas is oh it's climbing October two forty up up uh, it's up about point zero five. The Dow and the S and P and the Nasdaq are all in the red. Not terrible, but they are in the red. All right, let's check out some live cattle from October one eighty one ninety up one ninety two. December one eighty two eighty five up one seventy two. February is one eighty three fifty two up one seventeen. Feeder cattle for October 243.80 up two cents. November 241.67 up 32. And January's 236.65 up 52. Lean hogs, October 82.12 down 12. And December 74.20 down 10. I already got one text message on my phone. You're close. You're close, but not. No cigar for you there, young man. All right, let's see here. Uh, I was going to do this the other day, and I forgot. So, anyway, alfalfa hay exports for July totaled 165,461 metric tons, according to the USDA's Foreign Agriculture Service. That was, that was up roughly 7% from June and was the first positive mood month-over-month month improvement since March when export numbers began a steady decline. Alfalfa hay experts, experts exports to China also rebounded to 81,483 metric tons in July after three consecutive months of diminishing volumes. The Asian country imported almost 50% more U.S. alfalfa hay in July than it did in June. All hay exports in the United States totaled 244,723 metric tons in July, although this was 2% lower year over year, and it was up approximately 5% from June. So maybe some good signs coming for our alfalfa uh, farmers. And matter of fact, if I got time, uh, I got the, I want you guys to listen closely to how I say this. The big round balers versus the big square balers. And nowhere in this conversation later on the show will I be talking about housewife balers. <laughs> Dude, he argues with me every time I see him on that. I bet my 4x5 bale is tighter and got as much hay as your 5x6 bale. Take a hike, dude. I'm talking about Sugar Daddy over there at Dale High. <laughs> so, anyway, he just can't handle it because our bales are bigger than his bales. <laughs> so, anyway, all right, let's see here. Uh, wanted to go over what the Oklahoma Forestry, uh, the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry put out in an email this morning. This is the fire situation report for this side of the state, for Oklahoma. Uh, northwestern and southwestern Oklahoma. Hopefully we get some of these uh, rains that are moving in. It'll help out a lot. Uh, the winds are not going to be real terrible today, but I I think I've seen in the hourly deal tomorrow is going to be pretty, pretty gusty. So anyway, but near term, according to the Forestry Department, the three-day QPF holds optimism for a wetting rainfall in the driest part of the state. Rain chances are the highest Saturday evening through Sunday. Nearer to normal temperatures will be welcomed early in the, earlier in the week, early in the week, not earlier, sorry, with some continued rain chances ahead of what currently looks like another dry stretch in the 6 to 10 day forecast after this three day weekend. All right, fire bans, countywide fire bans going on, burn bans, however you want to call them. Harmon, Jackson, Tillman, I uh, wish I could, Tillman and Comanche, they've added a couple. And then the one right below Comanche, whatever. The, I can't read this fine print on my computer. Anyway, so those uh, in Greer County, let me, don't let me forget Greer County. Uh, you guys are currently right now 
under a countywide burn ban. Harmon, Greer, Jackson, Tillman, Comanche, and the one right below Comanche, whatever that one is, looks like the smallest county in the state. So that's all that's going on right there. Okay, let's go ahead and take a Wheeler General Store break. We'll come back. We'll see what we're going to talk about. Be right back after this. Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. It's known as the thief in the night. A lack of cattle mineral can lead to decreased weaning weights, small, weak calves, and severely compromised health. Don't let a gap in your feeding program rob your herd's performance. Stop by Farmers Union Co-op in Elk City and pick up a bag of Purina Wind and Rainstorm Mineral today. Farmers Union Co-op of Elk City is your authorized Purina dealer. This is the Elk City Livestock Auction Market Report for Friday, September 13th. 2,658 head were sold. Five head of steers at 425 brought 330. Six at 542 brought 267. Seven at 597 brought 247. Ten at 690 brought 249. Three at 758 brought 209. Seven at 790 brought 217. Nine head of heifers at 425 brought 266. Sixteen at 528 brought 246. Ten at 580 brought 235. Eleven at 642 brought 227, 7 at 825 brought 219, 30 at 866 brought 214.50, butcher cows were 5 to 144, butcher bulls brought 95 to 169, bred cows were 1550 to 2300, pairs brought 1850 to 2235, Elk City Livestock Auction 3202 South Highway 6, Elk City, Oklahoma, sale every Friday at 9 a.m. To consign, call Brandon Hickey, 580-497-6095. It helps to work with someone who's been down the same road you're traveling. Someone who knows what you're up against and what you're going through. When it comes to farmers and ranchers, that's us. That's who we are. Our lenders know ag inside and out because we're producers too. We approach it like a partnership. We want to put ag producers in position to be successful. We're very laid back and easy to deal with. And people seem to like that. We think you'll like it too. I'm Marty Maddox. Great Plains Bank in Elk City is here to lend farmers and ranchers a helping hand. Member FDIC. That life insurance that I have on myself, it's not for me. It's for my wife that she doesn't have to sell the home. She doesn't have to go worry about how am I going to make this car payment? How am I going to come up with the cost out of pocket to pay this funeral? Because, you know, that's an expensive cost. And it's a cost that you're going to have. If you had a machine in your garage that made money, it was a money-making machine. You went out every day and you flipped the switch on that machine and it generated money to pay your bills. Would you insure that machine? I've never had anybody say no. Sure they would. Well, you are that machine. You flip your switch on every morning when you get up. You flip your switch on when you go to work. But yet we don't insure ourselves. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. Hi, I'm Mickey Lively. I'm an insurance agent with Oklahoma Farm Bureau. My office is located in Greer County. Call me anytime at 580-782-3827. Life insurance and annuity products offered through Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company. Property and casualty products are offered through Oklahoma Farm Bureau Mutual Insurance and affiliated companies. When it comes time to put your hard-earned money toward a new vehicle, count on Lipscomb dealerships to give you a better value and car buying experience with friendly, no-pressure sales and quality service backed by a half-century of experience. Save more in the country at our seven dealerships across Texoma with over 1,000 Chevy, Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Ford vehicles, plus KTMs and can always on sale at LipscombDealerships.com. Good people, great deals, and family-owned since 1979. Now, back to more of Today in Act with Jimmy Clark. I was looking at some of these answers to my question on the wolf spider. How many babies do they uh, have on them? <laughs> I, I can tell some of you guys' imagination is really crazy when you see all those babies running around. I've got up to 300. I think I've seen one in here. What was it? 600? 750 babies? 500? <laughs> anyway... I'll, I'll announce the winner here coming up pretty quick. So, first of all, let's check out some weather in the big city of Slapout. And while I'm 
thinking about slap out. I want to give a shout out to a listener up there that's sowing wheat in the Oklahoma Panhandle. He's listening to the show right now all the way up there at Turpin. Thanks for listening. Appreciate it. And all right, slap out. 98 degrees feels like 97. Dew points 55. Humidity's 23. Southwest winds 13 with wind gusts up to 19. 10 day rain total. 15 one hundredths of an inch, three day average four inch bare soil temperature, 83 degrees. Sunset at 741. 30% chance of thunderstorms today. 100 for a high. Looks like you're going to get there maybe even a little hotter. A 20% slight chance of thunderstorms tonight. 71 for a low tomorrow. Check this out. You better get that wheat in the ground up there at Turpin because the rain is on the way. 50% chance of thunderstorms tomorrow and a high of 90 one degrees there you have it that is your ag weather update for slap out okay let's see here uh already did that oh i want to talk a little bit about this matter of fact uh the uh, osu uh, vet school party be coming on the show maybe even uh dr ashley ferris's husband who's working at osu now uh, working, specializing in actually these ticks and stuff going on. But originally from Eastern Asia, and don't you guys, don't worry. I'm not going to use the word that I'm, made me famous three years ago. It's none of those wordings are in here. This is actually pretty simple that I can actually even read it with my grade school education. Here we go. Originally from Eastern Asia, the Asian longhorn tick has established itself in Australia, New Zealand, several Pacific region island nations, and now the United States. Detection of the tick in 2017 on sheep in New Jersey was thought to be the first recognition of the tick in the U.S. However, upon further analysis, the tick was found in samples as early as 2010. In 2018, researchers at the Oklahoma State University College of Veterinarian Medicine identified the tick species on a dog from Arkansas. In the summer of 2024, the tick was identified on cattle in Mays County in northeast Oklahoma. And I did hear a little bit about that the other day when I was down at Fort Cobb. The reason why they didn't know if it came from Arkansas to that Mays County in Oklahoma because there was a county separated Mays County from Arkansas. But if a dog had it on or a coyote or any other varmints got on it, they're kind of figuring out how this thing's getting uh, passed around. The Asian longhorn tick parasites, multiple species, includes humans, pets, livestock, and wildlife, including birds. Uh, relatively small in size as compared to native ticks. It is a three-host tick. It spends 90% of its life off its host. The larvae, often referred to as seed ticks, feed on smaller animals, while the nymph and the adult stages uh, target larger animals, including humans and cattle. The four most common animals to this tick has been found on within the United States are dogs, white-tailed deer, raccoons, and cattle. The female tick can reproduce without mating and may produce 1,000 to 2,000 eggs at a time. That's about a lot more than a wolf spider. Anyway, a single female tick has the potential to create an established population in a newly introduced location in two to three weeks. The tick does not move far from available hosts, when transitioning between life stages. High humidity areas regularly visited by grazing livestock, such as wooded or tall grass areas, will more than likely sustain the tick. Dehydration is one of the most limiting factors in tick populations. Severe infestations of the Asian longhorn tick in cattle can lead to death from the stress of excessive blood loss, Production losses include decreased milk production and growth are substantial. The Asian longhorn tick has also been recognized as a victor for multiple diseases of both humans and animals, including viral, bacterial, and what is that? Protozoan agents? Did I say that right? Did I do good there? In other other countries, the tick is the primary victor of 
uh, a genotype in cattle. The protozoan causes clinical signs like uh, fever, lethargy, uh, and death. The mortality rate for cattle infected with this uh, varies from 3 to 90%. Well, why don't you just put zero to a hundred percent from 3% to 90%. I don't know where they come up with that number, but is this time, but as of this time, not in Oklahoma research into the connection between the Asian longhorn tick, uh, in the United States is ongoing. Like I said, maybe one of these days I can get, uh, Dr. Ferris's husband on here. Cause he is, uh, overseeing that and helping with the Oklahoma state, you know, uh, veterinarian uh deal going on there let's see if producers suspect that a tick is different from other ticks seen previously in their area then the tick should be submitted for identification veterinarians as well as osu extension educators can assist with the submission process samples should be submitted for identification to the oklahoma animal disease diagnostic diagnostic laboratory the best method for tick submission is to place the tick in a sealable glass vial with 70 percent ethanol the sample should include where the tick was collected gps coordinates or street address uh, address would be really helpful type of animal or if it was collected from a person and the date of collection all this will be required for identification if a tick is presumed to be an Asian longhorn tick, then the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry will be notified as to the location of the possible tick sample. So I'm going to dig into this a little further because when I was reading that last line, it got me to thinking. You guys remember when I was te- talking about the Mexican uh, uh, fever tick? About three years ago, you know, all those organisms. <laughs> anyway, uh, we, uh, oh, it brings back bad memories. Anyway, uh, I'm wondering if what they're doing, if they do find the Asian longhorn tick in an area, what they're doing compared to what they do like down in South Texas with the uh, Mexican fever tick, you know, quarantine that ranch or that whole area. I don't know. We're going to dig into this a little bit more, and I'm not talking about this to scare anybody, but you guys, we need to be aware of it because uh, this tick can actually cause death in your animals. So, and none's been reported in Oklahoma, no deaths, nothing like that, just a couple of cases. So anyway, but we we got a Dr. Biggs from the vet school at osu she's coming on here i think not next week but the following week to talk more about it and it's just something that we need to be uh you know we just need to be watching that's all i can tell you and anyway we got that all right let's see here uh one more thing before we go to break as you fine-tune your operation you put a significant amount of time and research into learning the ropes of the commodity markets, taking advantage of options and futures to get the most out of your crop. What if you could do the same with your fertilizer needs? Josh Laville, vice president of the fertilizer at Stonex, says fertilizer, the fertilizer marketplace, might be on a path to increasing its accessibility to farmers and opening up on the way you approach marketing. Most traders use uh, NOLA and they trade bar- and they trade barges. So the gold standard is fifteen hundred per ton futures because of the links directly with fifteen hundred tons on a barge. When you ask farmers what they're looking for, they want to trade maybe twenty five or fifty ton. That's me. That's really hard in a market that trades primarily fifteen hundred ton blocks. Even for the farmers who could find a, u- a use for 1,500 tons of fertilizer, they aren't likely wanting to purchase it, all of it, in one go. The market isn't supposed to be set up to do your entire yearly need in one trade. Linville says, we like to eventually get to be like the grain markets where you have corn and then you have corn minus. The growing interest for reducing fertilizer trade limits people are starting to understand if we want this market to truly grow we need another layer of liquidity the farmer and the retailer represent he says 
They've been uh, con- there's been conversation to get down to 25 ton contracts and get to where we're doing 50 ton blocks instead of 1500 ton blocks. Linville notes there are multiple regulated uh, regulatory bodies involved, even with after approvals are reached, and if there's enough of the, the market willing to trade lower volumes, open interest will be another factor in the timeline. I highly doubt they make changes to a month that already has open interest, he said. So let's just say all of a sudden, nothing else traded further out for April or beyond. This is all speculation. But what would probably be April 1st at the earliest for a NOLA uh, urea? NOLA DAP currently has open interest through December. So January would be the earliest. Hmm. Don't expect this is going to be exactly like the corn market. You might set on some bids or offers for quite a while, Linville says. When you look at the size of fertilizer globally, the number of tons traded and the number of hands that it touches, it can be a massively huge market eventually. But not today, he says. Anyway, I want a big shout out, a couple birthdays to some good friends of mine. Happy birthday, Ashley Thornbro over there at Sayre at the Southbound and Happy birthday down here in the breaks down there along the river to Quentin Sonodgrass down there between uh, on the river between Carter and Reek Trot. So big happy birthday to you guys. What are you, 25, 26? Only in your dreams, Ashley. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's go ahead and take a Wheeler General Store break. When we come back, I'll finish out the show with some other agriculture events and news. We'll be right back. The Day in Ag with Jimmy Clark. Are you tired of navigating the digital jungle all on your own? Look no further than innovative technology in Elk City. Running a business in today's fast-paced world can be overwhelming, but our experienced IT professionals are here to lighten the load. Whether you're in education, energy, finance, or any other industry, we've got your back with our IT solutions. Safeguard your business with our cutting edge internet security, reliable internet phone lines, and top-notch security camera networks. Your business's digital fortress starts here. Need on-site support? We're just a short drive away from computer repair to network installation, we've got you covered. Worried about cyber threats? Our cybersecurity awareness and training will keep your team ahead of the curve. Don't let technology overwhelm you. Call us at 580-243-1559 to discover how our 40 plus years of service can transform your business. Visit Innovative Technology at 105 Carter Road in Elk City or check us out online at itlpros.com. We're going abroad for the first time in years to Spain. So we started using Babbel. And started learning Spanish fast. With Babbel, you can start having conversations in another language in just three weeks. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? When you learn a language, you want to actually use it. Babbel is designed with that goal in mind. In just three weeks, we're starting to have conversations in Spanish. Gracias, Babbel. Babbel, language for life. Now try Babbel for free at Babbel.com. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Her daughter, Jessie, loves playing detective. But since we discovered she has sensitive skin, we've been playing detective, too. We thought the problem was our puppy. But it was actually our old detergent. So we switched to Tide Free and Gentle. Tide Free and Gentle has no dyes or perfumes, so it's gentle on her skin. If it's got to be clean, it's got to be Tide Free and Gentle. This back-to-school season, Tide and Downey are giving back with $1.5 million in scholarships. Enter to win. No purchase necessary. U.S. slash DC 17 plus. End September 30th. Rules. Tide.com slash scholarship slash official rules. Harvest equipment tires need to hold up to long hours, different soil conditions, and lots of road time. Firestone Harvest tires are built to keep up. They offer better traction, less soil compaction, better fuel use, and they're puncture resistant. Blair Tire and Feed keeps a bunch of Firestone Harvest tires in stock. Their inventory is huge. And when you need infield service, they guarantee to get there. If you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, they'll find you and get you moving again. Blair Tire and Feed at Highway 283 and 19 in Blair, Oklahoma. Hey, cotton farmers, are you walking in high high cotton? It's easier than you think. Have your cotton gin fast and efficiently at Western Planters Cotton Gin in Hobart, Oklahoma. 
Bet you didn't know they have the largest gin in the state and the connections to get top dollar on your investment. They're located at the corner of Highway 9 and Highway 183, just north of Hobart. Be sure and check them out online. WesternPlannersCottonGin.com Kent Watkins here, owner of SEI Agritech in Elk City. It is time for fall cover crop seed. This is a critical step in the growing process. Remember, keep it covered. Stop by SEI Agritech to get all your fall cover crop seed. In addition to that, we are now contracting winter cattle kids, another very important part of livestock management. Come see me. Let's get all your fall seed and your winter feed contracts done. All here at SEI Agritech in Elk City, located on South Randall. Jim is all wound up and ready to go. Here comes more of Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. All right, welcome back. Here's your Hobart Farm and Garden Ag weather update for southwestern Oklahoma. Big city of Tipton, Oklahoma, 96 degrees, feels like 100. Heat risk is moderate. Dew point 67, the humidity is 40%. The winds are out of the south, southwest at 12 miles an hour. The wind goes up to 19. No rain total, no rainfall in the last 10 days so far. Hopefully that changes the next couple of days. Three-day average four-inch bare soil temperature, 88 degrees. Sunset at 736. Hot 102 today. 73 for a low tonight and tomorrow. 98 for a a high with winds out of the south, 8 to 16 miles an hour. So there's your update. Also, this I was looking in deal here. Reminded me the boys are getting loaded up here and getting ready to head toward Burke Burnett, Texas. Uh, tonight, 7 o'clock, BigElkTV.com. Watch Elk City visit Joshua. It comes on there, Aaron and Jared do an awesome job uh uncovering football so anyway tonight seven o'clock on big elk tv.com elk city versus joshua there in burke Burnett, texas so anyway friendly, friendly reminder friendly reminder okay so the winner of the uh 66 to go was pretty close 85 there's between 50 and 100 baby spiders on a wolf spider when they're, I think they carry them for uh, three or four days before they go out on their own. But anyway, <laughs> 500, 250, 1,000, one person text in a million. <laughs> so anyway, so I know people have seen them. <laughs> You just got to learn to count your spiders. There's no 750 spiders on no back of one of those wolf spiders. Anyway, pretty funny. Congratulations. Uh, I, I let you know that you was a winner. As soon as my show's over, I'll have your 66 to go out here west of Elk City. Uh, on the, right there by Hutch's West Side. Uh, free meal combo. Man, I'm, just, I'm still telling you, their, uh, their fish deal, their cod deal is really good. I really enjoy it. So, anyway. Uh, it's good eating, and their ice cream is bad to the bones, all I can tell you. Thanks, everybody, for participating in. I had 40, 40 text messages in. 750 babies? Come on. <laughs> and then one person texted in 59. How do you come up with the number 59? Tell me. You're listening. I know you're listening. You listen every day. Share. What is it? How did you come up with 59? Odd number for that. Okay, bad as I hate to, I need to talk a little politics. And it's both sides, Trump and Harris. Former President Donald Trump said in a questionnaire released on Thursday that he would use every tool at my disposal, including tariffs, to expand the U.S. food and ag exports if he's reelected. Vice President Kamala Harris would not tolerate unfair trade practices, especially from China and other competition said senior aides to the Democratic nominee. Harris will push for immigration law reforms that resolve farm labor shortages and would strengthen crop insurance, said the campaign aides. Trump said his administration will strongly oppose animal welfare laws like California's Proposition 12 improvements may be 
must be made to reference prices, crop insurance, dairy margin coverage, and more specialty crop insurance. He said, he said, not as a, you know where I'm going with this? No, I will not go anywhere. But it's funny. He's saying, but she has to have aides to say, I don't like that. Candidates describe their farm and rural policies in response to a questionnaire from the Oak. Uh, the Oklahoma, the American Farm Bureau Federation, the largest U.S. farm group, the Harris campaign sent a four-page letter. The Trump campaign responded question by question. When China targeted our farmers, I sent $28 billion in relief payments to protect our farmers from Chinese abuses, he said Trump in a reference to the Sino-U.S. trade war. When asked how he would expand food in ag trade, I will always side with the farmers in America. Trump has proposed tariffs up to 20% on imported products, possibly as high as 60% on China. The mushrooming ag trade deficit plainly results from unfair trade practices. I will fight those barriers with every tool to my disposal, and I will make sure that other countries understand the consequences of blocking our farm products. U.S. exports have slipped in the face of the strong dollar and slow economic growth above, while imports have grown by $8 billion a year, driven by America's taste for fresh produce, wine, alcohol, and coffee. As Vice President Kamala Harris has stood up to China's unfair economic practices to protect Americans, including farmers and ranchers, said the letter by the chair and campaign manager of the Harris campaign. As president, she will not tolerate unfair trade practices from China or any other competitor that undermines American farmers and ranchers. Harris and running mate Tim Waltz support a earned pathway to legislation and eventual uh, citizenship for farm and other agriculture workers, in addition to strengthening the H-2A visa program administered by both Republicans and Democrats for decades, which helps fill seasonal farm jobs with temporary foreign farmers. Farm labor is the biggest limiting factor that American agriculture has. Farm Bureau President Zippy Duvall at the group's Annual convention held in Salt Lake City in January, the H-2A guest worker program, which provides seasonal workers, should be revised to allow year-round employment. He said half the farm workers are believed to be undocumented immigrants. Farmers have turned increasingly to the H-2A farm program. And I can see, I can vouch, I've seen that with the uh, combine crews. Uh, A lot of those guys are from South Africa and from Australia. Let's see here. Uh, what else? The Republican platform calls the biggest deportation program, calls for it, the largest deportation program in American history. The Republican Party is committed to sending illegal aliens back home and removing those who have violated the laws, according to this whole article. What do you guys think? What's, what's your two cents on that? So there you go. All right. We got a few minutes left here. I brought up, uh, I look at the cattle range. It's out of Amarillo every now and then. And I brought up, it, it has the index put out every Saturday. And this is actually from last Saturday. But it shows you a really good comparison of what's going on this week, what went on last week, what went on a month ago, and what went on a year ago, and what went on a five-year average. Pretty cool deal. So here's your example. Last Saturday... Live cattle for October was 177.65. The week before, it was 175.17. A month ago, it was 182.80. And then you've heard Brandon Hickey say on my show a lot of times that that, uh, that number needs to be 180 and above is where it should be. One year ago, live cattle was 186.92. Here's the kicker. Five-year average is 140.53. Feeder futures for September, last Saturday, 241.90. Last week, 234.30. A month ago, 242.77. A year ago, 257.36. Five-year average, 178.32. Let's see here. Uh, Average national prices for stalker steers last Saturday, 
was 286.17. Feeder steers was 245.11. Feeder steers, five-year average, 177.86. Stalker steers, 207.76. And let's see what else we got here. Here, here's some corn. Omaha corn prices, 412 last Saturday. The week before, 408. A month ago, 392. A year ago, 475. Five year average, 537. Kansas City wheat, 540 last Saturday. 518 a week ago, 490 a month ago. 672 a year ago. Five year average, 668. Cool numbers I thought you guys might want to hear. You guys have a great weekend. Appreciate you guys listening this week. It's Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark, brought to you by the First National Bank and Trust of Elk City in Sarah America. God bless.